Lions are called the king of the jungle, even though they don't live in the jungle. But when you can do this, you can be the king of whatever the hell you want. All hail the king. Hi, I'm Danielle and you're watching Animal Logic. About 15,000 years ago, lions roamed across most of the earth. European cave lions ruled from Great Britain to Alaska, while American lions reigned over everything from southern Canada to Patagonia. These early lions shared their kingdom with humans, and they were our ancestors' main predators. You most likely had a grandparent a thousand generations ago who got eaten by a lion. As the Ice Age came to an end, human populations boomed and forests took over much of the lion's former range. But lions don't do well in dense forest. They became extinct in most of the world, except the savannas of Africa and a small area of India. But where they still exist, they're the most dominant predator around. Lions can take down prey more than twice their size. The largest male lions are about 250 kilograms. Females, who do most of the hunting, only grow to be about 150 kilograms. But they go for prey of up to half a metric ton. Giraffes, zebras, wildebeest, and water buffalo are usually on the menu. It's been shown that lions rarely go for prey lighter than 200 kilograms with warthogs being the main exception. Sorry, Pumbaa. Though lions are fast and powerful, their real strength is in their numbers. Lions are the most social of all the big cats. The demographics of their pride vary depending on location and food availability, but on average, groups have two or three males, eight females, and babies of both sexes. Different members will assume different roles in the pride. Fast and agile females make the best hunters, while chunky males are good at defending their kills from other predators like hyenas, as well as protecting the pride from other lions. Lion cubs are easy targets, and even large herbivores like rhinos and elephants might attempt to kill a cub if it wanders into their territory. So having a strong group is important to keep the young safe. The pride is also crucial to their hunting strategy. Lions are highly effective pack hunters. This allows them to outflank and ambush prey they might not otherwise be able to catch. Lions are active opportunistically throughout the day. Hunting while the sun is up allows them to track vultures down for a free meal, while hunting at night allows them to more stealthily approach their prey. At zoos, you'll generally see them napping. This can be pretty reflective of their life in the wild, as they can sleep up to 20 hours a day. Think of your house cats. Male lion cubs can't wait to be king, but they do have a harsh road ahead of them. At around three years of age, they get kicked out of their group and become nomadic, until they're strong enough to force their way into a new pride. To do that, they have to fight the local males, as a rule of thumb, you can tell which lion is stronger by comparing their hair. It's not exactly a main measuring contest, but older lions produce more testosterone and have longer and darker manes. If the nomads think they can win the fight, they'll challenge the resident lions. If they win, they'll usually kill all the male babies, preventing them from ever becoming rivals. After that, they'll mate with all the females. Since nomadic lions are usually brothers, like Mufasa and Scar, that would make Simba and Nala brother and sister. Or at best, cousins? Gross. It may seem cruel to kill babies, but it is the best way for the males to ensure their genes get passed on to the next generation. During mating, the male lion rakes the walls of the female's vagina with backwards-pointing barbs on his penis. 
This causes the female to ovulate. I guess this is what Simba was talking about when he asked Nala if she could feel the love tonight. The cubs are born roughly four months after mating. Babies are completely dependent on their mother for the first two months of their lives. After that, they slowly get introduced to the pride. The females cooperate to raise the cubs, and even the males spend some time playing with them. Unfortunately, lion populations are decreasing, and people are the main reason. 150 years ago, there were over a million lions in the wild. 30 years ago, there were about 70,000. Today, there are less than half of that. Habitat destruction, poaching, and conflicts with humans are the main reasons for this. As more people move into the savanna and encroach on the lion's territory, it damages and fragments their habitat. It also causes more lion attacks on humans, which leads to lions being killed to protect people. There are thousands of lions in captivity, but most of them provide no conservation value beyond education, as they're unfit to be released into the wild. In captivity, lions can mate with tigers, creating ligers and tigons. Some of these hybrids can get really huge and weigh up to 500 kilograms. They're usually infertile, except for female ligers who can reproduce with other lions. Another interesting breed is the white lion. This is a rare morph as they're not albino. Their eyes are still pigmented. They're mostly found in South Africa and they're sometimes bred for canned hunts. There are efforts to reintroduce lions to their former habitat. One of the most interesting projects is the Atlas Project, which aims to breed lions that have high proportions of Barbary lion genes. The idea is to recreate the closest possible lion to the extinct Barbary lion and reintroduce them to the Atlas Mountains of Morocco. Hopefully, conservation measures like this will lead to the return of the king in their historic range. Long live the king! So what should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching!